Okay, it's time we get started. Uh, this is Sue Dengenis. I'm the Director of Marketing for Synchro Software. I am in our Connecticut office, and we also have Jacqueline Chen today doing the presentation. Jacqueline is in our Berkeley, California office, so we got East Coast, West Coast, and the USA covered here. Um, before we get started with uh, the topic today, Synchro Script, I uh, just want to make a couple announcements. Uh, we, we encourage you all to submit questions throughout the webinar. Uh, we will answer them at the end. Uh, we do try to keep this to 15 minutes because we know everybody's busy. Uh, we all are also recording the webinar, so anyone who registers for our webinars will receive a link to the recording, usually that uh, same day or the, the following day. Um, and you can share that with your colleagues. And lastly, um, if you haven't yet joined Synchro Academy, it's a great new online resource for anyone who has a Synchro license, whether it be scheduler or pro. Uh, there is, you get your own personal dashboard. We have articles of inspiration, all the training there, and you can track your progress through the training on the dashboard. Uh, lots of great things, uh, videos, workflows, um, all sorts of um, topics and features. So if you haven't yet joined, I'll send a link in the follow-up email, but you can also access that now from our home page in the bottom right corner. There's a link to Synchro Academy. All right, so we'll get started with today's topic, Synchro Script, and I'm going to pass um, the controls over to Jacqueline and let her get started. Thank you, Sue. Uh, I'm just going to start right away. Um, so Synchro uh, Script can be a very useful tool. Uh, so we recently released a beta version of Syntax, which can be found in help. Um, so I just want to start introducing Synchro Script um, um, by using these uh, two slides. So basically what Synchro Script can help users is that it, it, it can uh, transfer or calculate based on the uh, existing user fields or uh, parameters uh, you brought from the um, original um, modeling software. Also, you can uh, transfer or calculate the properties, too. Uh, so how it's being calculated or transferred is based on the uh, associations. If you use Synchro before, you know that 3D objects are associated to resources, and then resources are assigned to the tasks. So 3D objects have some kind of associations to tasks, too. So that's the basic of how this works. Um, and then a script can be something very simple. It just looks like, you know, you have the object, which can be task, uh, 3D objects, or resources. And in the parentheses, you can have your uh, conditions there. Because um, I'm a lazy person, I usually have the condition selected there. So whatever is selected will be, um, will, a synchro will run the command on. So after object, you usually have a command. It, so we're going to talk about the two frequently used commands here uh, today. One is set property. One is assigned user field. And then in the parentheses after command, you can have argument. You can have your function. Um, you know, it's, based on, it's usually based on the commands that you use um, for a script. OK, so now let's look at synchro script in synchro. So this is a, a arbitrary model that uh, I prepare for the webinar. So the first example I want to give is to set the physical quantity and also physical quantity um, number, a uh, physical quantity unit based on the 3D um, user field um, here. So. Uh, as we all know, the fret spread footings, the concrete spread footings, the unit we usually use is cubic yard, right? So let's select assign resource and then pick one of the three object here, which is the footing, and then uh, check if there is a um, volume user field that we can use for this. So as you can see, this is a 6 by 6 by 2 uh, concrete footer. And the volume here is 72, which is correct. Um, also, you know, uh, also, you will realize that this, uh, this volume is stored in the user field um, as a cubic foot number. So, so we will now run a script. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to select the two tasks. And then, because uh, my command will only be operated on 
uh, the selected objects here, which are the two tasks here. Okay, open the wrong, I open the wrong window. So right now I'm going to open Synchron Script. So let's clear everything here. So for this first script, I will be uh, typing everything uh, really slowly so that you will know that what I'm doing here. So as I mentioned earlier, the first thing you need to type in in a script is the object. So here we're uh, working on the tasks, right? We want to set the physical quantity to the two tasks that I selected. So the condition here is actually selected, okay? So I'm going to, the command will be only um, operated on the selected two, the two selected tasks. And then the command here that we're going to use is called set property, property, yeah, because the physical quantity is actually a task property. It's not a user field here. So the name uh, of physical quantity that Synchro, so it's the Synchro will know that, so what it, what the command is going to write into, right, write values into. So the right name for physical quantity is physical volume. So this part is actually physical quantity. And then uh, the physical quantity unit is required for the physical pro uh, for for the set property command here. So you will need to type in the physical quantity unit. In our case, um, it's cubic yard. So this physical quantity unit needs to be um, an existing unit in the drop-down list. Although I didn't show you guys, so uh, before you use this. Uh, set property for physical quantity, you will need to check the drop-down list of the physical quantity unit to make sure that's an existing value because we haven't um, allowed users to create their own physical quantity unit yet. So also the physical quantity uh, unit is case sensitive, just so you know. And it needs to be put in quote because its physical quantity unit is actually string. Um, so the math function we're going to use here, uh, the function we're going to use here is called sum. So what it's going to do is that it's going to sum the total volume um, from um, the 3D user fields, um, the 3D user field um, volume. Okay, so let's see. So the name of that uh, 3D user, that the 3D user field is actually uh, volume dot float. Again, it's also case sensitive here. After we have the sum of the volume based on the 3D associations, we need to divide that number by 27 to get the total cubic yard. Okay, so that's going to be my script. The first part, the object. The condition here is the selected ones, the selected tasks here. And then uh, the command here that I use is set property, and then I will write the physical quantity, um, and then also at the same time select the physical quantity unit um, here, because uh, it's a mandatory uh, property. Um, and then here, uh, the function, how Synchro is going to calculate, how Synchro is going to write into the physical quantity property is based on the 3D association, and it's getting the sum of this user field volume. And then later on, it's going to divide it by 27 to get the, to convert the unit from cubic foot to cubic yard. Okay, let's do a quick preview. Okay, now you can see that, you know, you will see an error message if it doesn't go through. But right now you can see these are the value that I'm going to write into the, Synchro is going to write into the physical quantity column. And then this is the, if you expand this um, column, you can see this is the cubic yard, which will be assigned to the physical quantity unit column. Okay. So, okay, that's for these two. Uh, so the second example I'm giving here is for the structural, uh, structural steel items. So right now what I'm going to do is that I am going to select the two uh, tasks too. Let's look at the 3D objects first to see what it has. So let's see. Okay, it's not, oh, okay, it's selected. So let me select one of the um, 
a structural steel column here to explain what I'm trying to do here. As we all know, the unit for a structural steel should be ton, right? And then the physical quantity is, uh, the quantity should be calculated based on um, the formula, right? The length um, of the, uh, the columns, the beams, and multiply by the weight per linear foot and then divide by 2,000 so that we can get the tonnage. So by looking into the user field stored in synchro, which we're brought into synchro from um, the um, source modeling program, is that I'm going to use this 3D user field length and then also use, which is going to give me the length of the, uh, the structural seal, the column. And then also use this parameter uh, or user field called uh, W, right? It's basically giving me the weight per linear foot, which is 49, based on the type of this um, beam here. Okay, so we so similarly, the same thing applies to the structural beams too, but I'm not going to show you everything. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to select the two task steel and then browse to an existing um, script that I stored, uh, I prepped for this webinar. So once I double click to open that text file, you can see this is the script that I'm going to run. So it's uh, we are still using the same command, and it's applied to the selected tasks, right? We're still writing the physical quantity and also the physical quantity unit, but the function here is more complicated. So it's using the length and then multiply um, the weight per linear foot and then divide by 2,000 to get the total tonnage and then sum them up based on the associ associations between 3D 3D objects and then tasks. Okay, we're going to do a preview and then to see if everything's okay and then run it. Okay, so now you can see the physical quantity and the physical quantity unit um, having written into those two tasks. Okay, and then I'm going to show you a signed user field real quick by bringing in uh, the um, text files that I prepared. So what I am going to do next is that for these two for these four tasks, I want to get the unit price from um, the user fields, from the 3D user fields cost. Okay, so let's select one of them to see. I know that when I prep the model, um, I have this um, arbitrary number, uh, which is the unit cost for concrete based on, you know, whatever unit is using here, cubic yard. And then also I have prepared a unit cost for uh, the structural column here, uh, the structural steel item here. It's basically 3000 bucks per ton. So what I'm going to do is that I'm, instead of using the uh, copy values, instead of using the copy values to associated objects feature, I'm going to run a script to get what I want. Basically to grab this number and then assign it to the user field, uh, um, unit price which is a task user film. So uh, I'm going to bring up this script that I prepared. So what I did was that what this script is going to do is that it's going to assign, it's using the new command, assign user field. The target user field is a task user field unit price. And then the type of the user field is float, which is number. And it's coming from uh, the number, the value of this unit price user field is coming from this 3D user field cost, okay? And I'm going to do a preview and then hit run. So you can see this unit price have been brought into here. And then similarly, I can assign user field to this um, task cost, right? It's the uh, cost for each task. So, uh, I'm going to bring up a new um, script that I prepared. So it's applying to the selected tasks. It's assigning the user field to the task user field uh, cost, and then its type is float. And then what it does is that it's um, it's getting the user field. Okay, we need to get rid of the sum. So it's getting the values, it's getting the values from this uh, function here, which is multiply the unit price, this one, by the physical quantity, the value stored in physical quantity 
audit property. Okay, let's do a review. Uh, preview and then hit run. Okay, so now the cost per task is calculated and then stored in this user field. Yes. Okay, so this is pretty much what I have for everyone today. I think we probably won't have enough time for questions, but Sue. Uh, yeah, thanks Jacqueline. Uh, that was um, a great overview. I know it's a complicated um, topic and it's new for people, uh, so you can refresh with the recording of the webinar. However, uh, we do have, uh, hopefully, if those of you who can stay on for a minute, we do have a couple questions. Uh, the first one is, is there a list of syntax that Synchro can or cannot accept, as well as case sensitivity? Um, I believe so. So this question I'll have to uh, check, the, uh, check with our development team and then get back to um, whoever asked this question. Okay. okay, so we'll follow up with you, Steve, on that one. Um, and lastly, how do I assign a task ID to a 3D object? Oh, so uh, how this can be done is that you can select a couple of 3D objects or, or uh, write a condition, right? Uh, so I think what you can do is that to run, um, to create a user field for tasks or if you don't uh, have it created, Synchro will create it for you if Synchro sees that it's not in existing user field. And they use this um, function for, because um, task ID is like a string uh, type of values, right? You can use this um, function here. What it does is that it's going to concatenate um, the task IDs by using comma. Yeah. So that's the uh, script for assigning uh, associated task IDs to, uh, back to the 3D objects. So, yeah. If we do a preview and then run it real quick, I think you can see it here. Yeah, like like this. Uh, but I do have one last thing to mention to um, um, the audience is that uh, this is just a sneak peek of what we are working on right now. Um, so in the future, uh, we will be introducing a new feature. Um, which is going to look like this so that you can see all the available properties and then commands and in the user fields um, are there uh, in this formula editor. So yeah, that's what, what we're working on and then so that um, just to get everyone excited about this. So I think the potential of this feature is huge. Okay. All right, if you have time, uh, we have one more question, Jacqueline. Okay. Uh, once the script has been written, does it automatically continue to update the data for new activities? Uh, I don't think so. For, uh, so basically, you will once, either when the schedule is updated or um, the model is, well, well, when I say updated, it's actually synchronized. You will have to rerun the script if the values in the sorting the parameters are changed. But I think in our um, upcoming release, um, we will have the, um, the functions or um, um, how it's calculated um, stored in Synchro. So you can hit on this button, which is to recalculate the user field values. Okay, very good. Uh, so that gives you a brief overview. Uh, I will send out the recording uh, this afternoon. And um, as you can see, uh, the uh, project delivery team here at Synchro is really good at this stuff. And if you have projects that are going on and you don't have the internal resources to create your 4D models or uh, validate and optimize your, your project schedules and plans, um, if you need resources short term or long term, then the SPD, the SPD team, the project delivery team, is available for that purpose, um, and they can work in your office or remotely. So uh, do get in touch if you have any interest in a proposal for services. Uh, thank you all for attending, and uh, hope to see you uh, next webinar. Thanks, Jacqueline. Thank you. Bye.